the best thing to do is go on curriculum and like post, you know, jobs for failed screenplay writers and teach them to become copywriters because they, they can write very well. Let's say you are just starting out, right? And, you know, you don't necessarily need an Elon Musk to teach you. You need somebody who's maybe a couple of steps ahead of you. Um, how do you identify these people? Yeah, that, that that's really dangerous, though. The couple of steps ahead of you thing is a really dangerous thinking because, like, it's typically the wrong couple of steps. Okay, interesting. <laughs> it's it's not the right steps. Right? And I'll tell you why, right? Yeah. So if you, you know, I, I you know, I got I got started in this game long time ago as as you have as well right so for example like you know i remember you know getting a merchant account was like equal to getting a mortgage right it's like yes. you know put the paper <laughs> get the bank statements in you know you got fifty thousand dollars like come on give me 10 grand right no nah, we'll hold 10 percent or whatever right all that stuff right and then you have to go to american express and get a separate thing and all these stuff right then it was like let me build a page let me do uh html you know it's, it's like oh i want to go buy some ads okay great fuck get an ad server go find a site do an io right all these things, right? And it was like a much more, you know, even though there was a lot less people, like, you know, people like, like but the thing is, it's like, you know, I learned how to do everything myself, right? And so, you know, you had to do it without the handicap, right? And what I mean by that is like, if you look at most of the, our current, so I left, you know, I, I was running webinars 2004 and 2018, and I had a different last name on Facebook because I had my identity stolen and like, uh, cause, you know, I had like a bunch of cars and everything on there. Etc. So like they use like, you know, what car do you have? They looked in the Facebook and like stole my identity. Right. So I was like, oh, wow. oh shit. So I deleted all that. But what happened was, um, what happened was like, um, I came back in 2018. I was like, man, it's like, there's a lot of people teaching this stuff. They must be good. Right. So, so I'm like, this is great. So I started like looking around and I was like, no, all these people suck. Well, not all, almost like most of these guys suck because it's like, it's the damn pixel. Right. So, you know, what you have to realize is like a uh, recency of customer, right. Recency of customer and a buyer when somebody buys something, a buyer will buy anything, right? And so the magic of the algorithm, the Facebook from 2014 to about, you know, like last thing, last March was the pixel. So it did everything for you, right? The handicap. So you didn't have to know marketing psychology. You didn't have to do no copy. You didn't have to know shit. You didn't have to know pages. You just had to be there and make a claim. And then also like, you know, credit was abundant. And so everybody was like, you know, money was flowing and you were just there to receive it, right? And so the market was building the desire instead of the person knowing how to create desire, right? So so what happened was like a lot of people these days that are like gurus, I know because a lot of them come to me and pay me like, you know, 50 to $100,000 for consulting to like help them. And they're like, my shit is dead. My business is dead. My, uh, you know, whatever. And so um, the numbers are way down, right? So if you look at their wins, if you look at the testimonials, pay attention to the time, you'll see like 2015, 2016, 2017. Nice. So the best question in this industry to ask is when, right? When? So I da, 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 when? Da, 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 da. When? Oh, the one. Webinars are great, right? Yeah. When? 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 And so when you ask the question of when, then it's like you get the truth. So the first thing to ask is like when, right? So that's the stuff. So what happens also, um, there's two part answer to this question. Like, so one part is like everything teaches process. The problem with teaching process is like it stops working because it's built on third party components, such as, for example, if you're teaching webinars, like, oh, you know, make get rich with webinars, right? Okay. So you go teach webinars and then what ends up happening is in the pixel changes, you know, quality of the lead goes down, recency goes down, people don't show up, the interest is down, you know, whatever numbers. Now, people can still make it work, but the the guys that know how to do it, right? But most don't. And so when you teach process, it doesn't, it never, it never works. The process always breaks, right? So that's yeah. why you see gurus, process, system, formula, method, whatever. Psh, dead. Psh. So I don't teach process. And after learning that, I'm like, I'm not doing process anymore, right? So that's one thing. Uh, so so a lot of the stuff being taught is is basically uh, people that had it easy. So the time has changed. So the when is different than it is now, right? So as far as I know in this industry, I'm the only one teaching a lot of the stuff that, you know, you don't need a pixel, you don't need this. Because to be honest, like, if you want to run, learn how to write, you know, run Facebook ads or YouTube ads, you can learn the technicality over a weekend. The psychology takes a while, the creative aspect, right? The other thing is um, what I learned a long time ago was to, um, if I wanted to learn, uh, knowing this question of when is like the, 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 the concept of derivative experts. Right. Okay. And so, so what ends up happening is like you have every industry has what's called a super text, right? And so a super text is basically like the foundational text in an industry that it's, you know, it gives the foundation to industry. Like, so for example, like Newton's work, right. That gave foundation to, to, the, to his, you know, field of study, right. In our industry, you know, you have like, um, you know, Robert Collier letter book, Johnny e. Kennedy's work in copywriting, Claude Hopkins, uh, Gary Halbert letter would be a, a, the super text to degree. It's the stuff that gave the foundation, right? 
Yes. And so what ends up happening is um, you have the super text and then you have the next generation, which is good. And you have the next generation, which is good. And then the third generation, it's like a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. Because as time goes on, uh, you know, because if you think about what marketing is and sales, it's nothing more than communication, right? So I don't think, I'm, you know, it's like, even though I can probably beat any copywriter in the world when it comes to copy, it's like the messaging is it. So copywriting is nothing more than messaging, right? And so if you start thinking about copy as messaging, it's like, you know, a tweet's a message, a Facebook post is a message, an email is a message, a letter is a, it's all a message. What message are you inserting? So as technology gets better for us to send messages, the less we need to improve the skill of sending that message. And so this is where AI comes in. So it's like AI comes in, so they're helping us create a message, but it's not the right message because it doesn't know to whom it's going, right? So who you sell is important to, right? So so what happens is um, with the super text is you have these derivatives. So it's a, it's a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy, and then they forget the art of it, right? So when I learned when I learned this concept, actually the way I learned the concept is I studied um, when I got into copy heavily, right? I was like, well, who are some of the best writers in the world? Just screenplay writers, right? So I went into that world and started like hand copying screenplays, right? And so um, if you want to hire like really, if you're a company and you want to get like really, really great um, copywriters, you know, the best thing to do is go on Craigslist or something and like post, uh, you know, jobs for failed screen screenplay writers and teach them to become copywriters because they, they can write very well. And so, um, so I started, and so in Hollywood, it's like, you know, you have these old movies and you notice like there's a lot of classics in the seventies, eighties, et cetera, nineties, like the movies felt different, right? Yes. Yeah. But if you notice movies now, right now, like in today's day and age, it's like, they can't make a movie without special effects. Like they cannot, like they cannot, I mean, you, you, some can, I guess like Quentin Tarantino and like, you know, it's a few guys like, uh, what was that? Uh, what are two brothers? You know, there's two brothers that, that make movies, uh, you know, country for old men, Cohen brothers. Yeah. Cohen oh, brothers. Yeah, can't, okay. yeah. They're fantastic. Yeah. But most can't. Right. And so in Hollywood, this is what happened. So it's like, yeah, the first generation that was there from like 1930s. Then the second generation was like, uh, I think Francis Coppola and, uh, Stanley Kubrick and stuff. And there's like, you know, classics, yeah, the Godfather, et cetera. Then you had the eighties and nineties, which had some good movies, but you could see the fade, right. The fade into like BS. They were trying it, in the eighties and bad special effects, but still they were starting. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But now, so that's what happens. Right. And so when it comes to learning, it's like, just go to the super text and they're all like cheap or free. Like, so it's like, you know, like Johnny Kennedy. Uh, and, and so uh, like what I did was like, when I read the Halbert letter, like Gary Halbert letter, I would reach each thing. And like, anytime he would mention a book, I would just write it and put it on the side. And then when I was done reading his letter, I would read that book. Right. And then in that book, anytime he mentioned another book, I would save it, go read that book until I ran out of things to read. Yeah. So that, that, that'd be my advice uh, to people. Now that requires patience and most people don't have patience. So I don't well, I know. Guess, I guess it wraps up. Like, it's almost like a good wrap up to the beginning of the question, which is like the AI and, and who to hire and stuff like that is that essentially it, it, what I'm getting from you is, is you don't necessarily need somebody that's just going to get you a couple of steps ahead. You should have the will in order to get yourself that couple of steps ahead because they're, the the resources and the information are all out there if you want them, right? You don't yeah. need somebody to handhold yeah. you. And that obviously, uh, you know, when you're building a team, that's actually another another quality is obviously making sure that somebody doesn't need to be handheld uh, across things that they, they, they can, you know, um, well, be a self-starter, you know? You know, and, like, like, like you, you pay amateurs to figure it out and you pay professionals to do it. Right. That's the biggest difference. Right. So it's like you pay amateurs to figure it out and you pay professionals to, to do the job. Right. That's it. And so it'll cost you a lot more to figure it out than to do the job, even though it might cost more upfront. Right. Yeah. That's one thing I learned a hard, hard way. <laughs> yeah. No, um, it's, it's definitely, you have to pay for skills, right. You need to get the right people. You got to compensate them. So. Well, it should uh, be free to be honest with you. Like if, if, you know, like, like my whole philosophy of marketing is like to compete on economics. Right. So it's like, if you really like, there's three levels of economics, you know, you got the, the front end offer economics and you got the secret economics and you got the hidden economics, right? So secret yeah. economics is like doing deals in the back to offset the, the burden of um, delivery for a good amount of money. And then hidden economics is basically like allocating capital, right? So if you really think about what business is, it's nothing than like uh, acquisition of capital, allocation of capital, multiplication of capital, right? That's it. So it's like if you, you know, offers acquire capital, you sit there and you're like, okay, well, who do I give this capital to? You allocate capital. And then you multiply capital. If you really think about what, you know, Elon Musk does, what Buffett does, what all the super rich, they're just, they, they know how, they have a system that acquires capital offers some type of thing. Right. Yeah. And then they sit there and they have good management and well, what good management does is allocate capital and then make sure that allocation gets implemented to create multiplication of capital. Right. So 
you know, with, with offers, um, I had, I had a guy I work with, you know, I took him from hundred K a month to 3 million a month. And, um, you know, it, you, the question then is like, well, you know, what comes first, chicken or the egg? How do we pay for this? Right. It's like, how do you pay for the team? Right. Cause it's like, you know, it's not fun. Like, you know, taking on like seven to 10 grand a month, you know, a bunch of people, you know, it's the next thing we get like a hundred grand a month, whatever, et cetera. Right. Yeah. And so then it was easy. It was just like, well, just create the back end, and each one of those back end sales covers the front end and the front, like these people and these people get you a lot of money. So it's like, it's very easy if you really think about, um, the other thing is like, when it comes to offers and everything, it's like, there's this sense of, you know, we tend to look up to really, you know, people that are kind of like giants. Right. And it's like, it's very intimidating. Like when you look up to guys are like they're giants, but like, we don't really celebrate the smaller heroes. Right. And those, those are the people that it's like, so it's like everything big starts small. Right. And so it's like, you know, every offer that makes a million a month at one point made, you know, hundred K a month and at one point made 10 K a month or a thousand dollars a month, whatever. Right. Hope you found today's session valuable. If you have any questions for me or just want to connect, please feel free to visit my website, mariasparagis.com. That's M-A-R-I-A-S-P-A-R-A-G-I-S.com. I'd love to hear what you're working on. So drop me a line on any hot button issues your business is experiencing. And remember, don't worry about failure. You only have to be right once. 